An alkyne is a molecule that contains a carbon-carbon triple bond. So when we are asked to name an alkyne, our first step is to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms that includes the triple bond. We're not necessarily looking for the longest chain of carbon atoms. We're looking for the longest chain that includes the triple bond. So for example, with this first molecule, our longest chain of carbon atoms is going to have to include those two carbons and will continue along the chain and it looks like this is our longest chain. When we are ready to number the carbon chain, we want to number it in such a way that the the carbon carbon triple bond gets the lowest possible number. So for this molecule that means that we want to number those carbon atoms from the right side of the chain to the left side of the chain. Like other molecules, we'll start the molecule's name by naming the substituents first, including their location. This molecule has a methyl group on carbon number five, so it's a five methyl. And then, like we saw with alkenes, our next job is to name the parent chain of the molecule, including the location of the triple bond. And of course, we're going to have to make a change to the ending of the name to reflect that it contains a triple bond. So the parent chain with six carbons, that is a hexane, but because this contains an alkyne, we will drop the ane and replace it with yne, Y-N-E, to indicate that we have the triple bond present. The location of the triple bond is starting on carbon number one. So this is one hex yne. With alkynes, there is no such thing as stereochemistry. So we never have to think about E versus Z or a cis versus trans. This is a linear 180 degree bond angle SP hybrid carbon. So the substituents always are in a linear uh, arrangement around that triple bond and we don't ever have to think about a cis or a trans situation. So this molecule's name, 5-methyl-1-hexine, and like with alkenes, you can put the number uh, the, of the location of the triple bond in the middle of the name. So that would look like 5 methyl hex one ine Let's check out this example over here. First, we want to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms that includes the triple bond. So this is a three carbon chain. We want to number to give the triple bond the smallest possible number. Again, our goal is not to prioritize the numbering of any other substituents on the carbon chain. Our goal is to prioritize the, the numbering of the triple bond. The triple bond gets the smallest number. A three carbon chain is propane. So as an alkyne, this is propyne. The substituent on this molecule is a chloro on carbon number three. So this is three chloro, one propyne, or three chloro prop one ine. Let's look at a few more examples. So here we have another, we want to find the longest continuous chain of carbons that includes the triple bond. Number the carbon chain so that the triple bond has the smallest possible number. We don't have any substituents on this molecule at all, so we'll jump straight to the parent chain. The triple bond starts at carbon number two. Five carbon chain is pent. This molecule's name is 2-pentyne. Again, as a refresher, when you're locating the position of the triple bond, and this is also true for locating the position of a double bond, you use the smaller of the two numbers for the location of the triple bond. So this triple bond starts at carbon number two and goes to carbon number three. We use the smaller number, number two, in the molecule's name. Next example. We have a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain. 
whether we number from left to right or right to left, our triple bond is going to be on carbon three going to carbon number four. If this molecule was asymmetrical, we would want to choose to number from left to right or right to left, whichever would provide the smallest possible set of numbers for our substituents. But because this molecule is perfectly symmetrical, it's not going to matter whether we number from left to right or right to left. We'll actually end up with the exact same name. You could try that out if you wanted to. So our substituents are a methyl and a methyl and a methyl and a methyl. We have four methyls. So that's tetramethyl. Their locations are on carbon 2, carbon 2, carbon 5, and carbon 5. 2, 2, 5, 5. I'm going to erase this 6 because it's confusing. So remember when you're um, giving the names uh, and the, the locations of your substituents, if you have two identical substituents on the same carbon, like we have in this case, you still have to list that carbon's or that substituent's location, uh, every substituent's location. So if you have two substituents on carbon 2, that means you need to have two number 2s. And if you have two substituents on carbon 5, you have two number 5s. Every substituent gets identified in terms of its location. Six carbon chain, so this is a hexane. Uh, as an alkyne, it's a hexine. The triple bond starts on three, so this is three hexine. So now our examples are going to get a little bit trickier. Here's a cyclic molecule that includes an alkyne. Our priority is to include the triple bond in the carbon chain. When you have a molecule that has a cyclic component as well as a straight chain component and you're finding the longest carbon chain, your longest carbon chain is either exclusively the ring or it is exclusively the straight chain you cannot mix and match. So for example, we cannot start with our straight chain and then go into the ring. This carbon atom right here, because it belongs to the ring, could only belong to this sort of a parent chain. We can absolutely not extend a parent chain into a ring or out of a ring. So our parent chain is either going to be this or it's going to be this. And since we are prioritizing the alkyne, our parent chain has to be this right here. Even though that is only five carbons, fewer than what we see in the ring, again, it's important to prioritize the triple bond. So here is our carbon chain, and we want to number to give the triple bond the smallest possible number. So that will be numbered from left to right. Our substituent on carbon number one is this cyclohexane. That as a substituent will be called cyclohexyl. Remember, as a substituent, we uh, give the ending il, yl, to indicate that it's a substituent. The cyclohexyl ring is on carbon number one. And then we have, starting on carbon number two, we have our alkyne pentine.